Hi friends, hello everyone. Bestiality, the quintessential cornerstone of carnal cordiality, exemplary of exquisite delectable depravity. Okay, I just muted my mic. Hello, hi everyone. <laughs> oh man, we were off to an inauspicious start this morning. Yeah, I, I turned my mic on and then I accidentally turned it back off again. So anyway, hi everyone, hello, happy Saturday. It is I, Brennamania, highly professional, flawless streamer on the Twitch. How are you guys doing today? I thought I might read some Homestuck today. I hope that's okay with all of you. Um, first of all, sorry, let me scroll back in chat and see if I can catch everyone who has said hello real quick. So, Cole Rain's one of the early birds. Hello, happy Saturday. Heterosapiens, hi, hello. Uh, let's see. Keyblade, hello, hi. Hi, Dark Sonic, hello, Dre, hello, Dragon Master. Hey, Shoosh, Pap Shoosh. What is up? Thank you for the follow, by the way. Uh, I Smile, hello. Hi, Savas, how's it going? My dude. Uh, do, 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 do. Jelly Possum, hello, hi. Hello, hello, hello. Kayla, hi. Hello, good morning to you. One day I did it. Schwindu, Schwindu the Masterful. Life. Hello, I'm glad you can catch us today. Hello, hi. Uh, let's see, did I miss it? Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, Jeff. Everyone's like, Jeff, just start reading Homestuck. And I'm like, but I want to say hi to everyone who said hi. Because that's just how I am. I am a good host. I am the best host, in fact. <laughs> Hello, weirdo, how's it going? You are not late. You are not late. Um, I'm just having te te technical, uh, blah, 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 technical difficulties with the stream, and I'm also having technical difficulties talking, apparently. Yo, Goldie, what's up? Hello, Seth. How's it going? Yo, Bunkus Boy. Oh, man. I think I may have caught everyone who said hello. If I did not say hello to you and you did say hello, I am sorry, and also hello to you. Hi. Also, it's Tara's birthday today. Yay! My fuzzy little girl is two years old today. She's over there on the couch. Right there. She is all tuckered out because we went to the dog beach this morning and she got to run around and play with other dogs for like an hour. And it was, it was good. She even pooped. She pooped, and now she is pooped. So anyway, yes, yes, Samus, exactly. <laughs> My death marks the end of the universe. <laughs> I'm an excellent host. Right. Hey, Banjo, how's it going? Happy Saturday. All right. So we are on Act 6, Act 1. I almost said Act 6, Act 2. And that would not have been correct. <laughs> but yes, we're on Act 6, Act 1. We are learning about the Alpha Kids. Uh, so far, we have uh, we have met Jane and Jake we're looking at right now. And whoever Lalonde is. I don't think we have a first name on Lalonde yet. But her voice is, is so much fun to do because she's just, she's just drunk all the time. <laughs> And it's fantastic. Uh, you know what? It just occurred to me that I totally don't remember what voice I was doing for Strider. I'm trying to remember what it was. I remember that Jake was was British, and and I talk like this mainly when I'm Jake. Yes, yes. Or I could go back to this voice like I did last week. Like I could just change Jake's voice. From week to week and just have it all be canon. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Strider was monotone, Dave. Serious, serious douchier, Dave. <laughs> all right. Okay. Anyway, um, let's carry on. Jake is going to message his good bro. That's where we picked up. That's where we left off last time. Let me turn the music down. Skosh. Turned down my headphones too. All right, so here we go. All right, so Strider seems to be nowhere to be found. <clears throat> oh wait, what, what was what was the statement he just made? Let's check the end of the pester log here. Like, is something the matter, Jake? This is your this is your auto responder. Look at that statement you just made. 
It's time for me to respond with some words, ideally chosen and arranged in a way that will wreck your shit in a subtle and psychologically devastating way. Har har har. Just so ironic. Quotes, quotes, quotes. I'm laughing my caboose straight off the tracks. A lot of families just died in the tragic derailment. Okay, the caboose remark was actually pretty funny, Jake. If I truly were what you say I am, I wouldn't be able to feel the human emotions of joy and laughter. No. Laughter isn't an emotion, dick prince. I think you should back up your back your claims up with proof before you go heaving around such accusations. I love that he's just like carrying on with his autoresponder. This is great. Man, it's so flipping obvious. You start getting kind of extra technical and vague and automaton-like. And kind of aloof and brusque. I mean, even aloofier and bruskier than usual. Also, you use the phrase, it seems a lot. It's so silly, it really blows the AI immersion, man. <laughs> Bullshit. I'm being like the perfect dude right now. A fully fucking legitimate human being. Okay, then check this out, Mr. Legit Human Dude. Excuse me, excuse me, sir, not to be a bother, but could you please tell me all about this Strider Fellows autoresponder? It seems you have asked about the DS's chat client autoresponder. About DS's chat client autoresponder. DS, why that could stand for Dave Strider, but it probably stands for. Duh, other Strider. <laughs> This is an application designed to simulate DS's otherwise in inimitably rad typing style, tone, cadence, personality, and substance of retort while he is away from the computer. The algorithms are guaranteed to be 96% indistinguishable from DS's native neurological responses, based on some statistical analysis I basically just pulled out of my ass right now. <laughs> you see? What if I was just fucking with you there? Would it be really so unthinkable for a human to type that? Because you always say shit like that after I catch wise to your games. You as in the autoresponder. Unimpressed. Logical fallacies are as pervasive throughout your argument as your antiquated verbal tics. Oh yeah? Hey, tell me about the autoresponder. Make it snappy, shitnickers. It seems you have asked about DS's chat client autoresponder. <laughs> this is an application designed to simulate DS's otherwise in inimitably rad typing style, tone, cadence, personality, and substance of retort while he is away from the computer. Algorithms are guaranteed to be 93% indistinguishable from <laughs> DS's native neurological responses based on some statistical analysis I basically just pulled out of my ass right now. <laughs> He's, he gave a different he gave a different percentage though, so it's not like exactly the same response. It's an iteration, but it's not fully the same. So, ergo, concordantly, vis-a-vis. -vis. <laughs> Gee, dude, you sure typed that exact same thing pretty fast. Are you still fucking with me? It could be coincidence that I typed the same answer. You always type that answer. It could be a coincidence that I always type the same answer. Ugh. <laughs> I can't stand this. Every time we do this, I just wind up whistling Sweet Dixie out of my bumhole. This is pointless. I'm not having this conversation unless it's with my real life friend. The one with human feelings who isn't a pretend person inside sunglasses. Okay, but I'm pretty sure he's going to share my position on the matter. <laughs> Golgotha's terror ceased pestering, Timaeus testified. <laughs> Oh, nice. Don't tell me how to live my life, Savas. Hi, the blank page! Happy Saturday. I don't know if I said hi to you, so I'm saying hi to you now. Alright, Jake, ditch the computers. He's just so infuriating sometimes. Or at least his responder is. Okay, the real Strider is too. There's barely any difference between them anyway. The responder just uses a few more generic response templates. And even those you suspect the AI is savvy enough to use on purpose for the sake of irony, or to get a rise out of you or whatever. That silicon bastard knows damn well what it's doing. You shed this ridiculous outfit because you look like an idiot. It's time to get serious here. No more fooling around. You need a more dignified looking computer. A thinking man's computer. 
So what are, what are all these things you just discarded here? You just expelled. Oh, so basically his Lord English outfit is like all of his computers at once, it seems. Or something like that. I'm just assuming that every article of clothing he just ditched is a computer. Because he's he's Jade's descendant slash ancestor. I'm not really sure. I have suspicions about the Alpha Kids in relation to the Beta Kids too. Like, I, I, I'm kind of, because of time shenanigans, I'm actually kind of wondering if they're all each other's ancestors. Don't answer that. Don't tell me whether or not that's true. I'm just saying, like, that's my current suspicion and I want to see if I'm right. Anyway. Anyway, Jake, where's Skulltop? Much better. You look like you mean business. Yes, that's a thinking man's computer. Why? I guess, I guess, I guess that's appropriate for a thinking man's computer because you're putting it basically directly on top of your brain. So, yes. Hmm. No sign of Lalonde online. No surprise there. You wonder if Jane knows where your bro's at? You should try to cool your jets before talking to her. Today is a special day she's been looking forward to for a long time, and she's probably on cloud nine. You wouldn't want to ruin it for her. All right, Jake, pester Jane. All right. Gotha's terror began pestering gutsy gumshoe at 6.05. Jane, forgive my botherations. I know this is meant to be a spanking rip snorter of a day for you and all, but do you happen to know where the devil fucking Dickens Mr. Strider might be? Oh, that's fine. Oh, we've seen this conversation before, that's right. I am. I have been meaning to message you sooner, actually, but I suppose in all the hubbub today, it plum slipped my mind. Which is a shocking fact on its lonesome on its lonesome, considering what I have to tell you. E gad! Loosens collar a bit. <laughs> As for the Strider business, hmm, he's an elusive guy, Jake, you know that. I talked to him yesterday, um, uh, that's as much help as I can be. Shoot, I really need to ask him something, but he's got his blasted autoresponder turned on. Hoo-hoo, I love that thing. He wouldn't be pleased to hear you say that. What do you need with him? Does this have to do with your crazy pen pal project? It most certainly does, and time is of the essence. Today is the day I have to finish it and send it. Not a day later. So you see why I'm feeling really friggin' discombobulated at the moment. Sorry, Jay. Oh, this would be the this would be the birthday present for your grandmother? No, it is for your grandfather, simply to be relayed to him by my grandmother. A joint gift to him from she and I. Her and me. What? Who and you now? A joint gift from her and me. Grammar, Jake. Yo, Talastrog, how's it going? Happy Saturday. Also, hello, Freezy Fish. Happy Saturday to you, too. Happy Saturday to everyone. Uh, let's see. Let see. Oh, for Frick's flipping sake, Jane, this is no time for your prudish pedantry. Leave your bookish malarkey in a dusty old library somewhere. I have an adventure to get on with. So, if I have this straight, the big thing hogging up your plate today is not this marvelous new game which I have invited you to play with me, but finishing a robotic rabbit to give to my dead pop pop? Bingo! Double pistols and a wink. You are a very strange and silly boy. Please, Jane, we have addressed this. I am sending the gift back in time to when they are both alive and about our age. Or... Something like that. Something funny is going on here that I have not fully grappled yet, but dagnabbit if I'm not gonna see it through. <laughs> oh, see ya, Jelly Possum. Thanks for dropping by. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Well, Godspeed then. I do hope you can pull it off. Are you being fresh with me now? No! Look, Jane, I know you've never believed me, and you think everything I say is some big cockamamie goof off. But I think today of all days is when you should start taking some things more seriously. Especially since I have always had your back. I have always believed in you. Hey, I have believed in you too. However, believing somebody isn't the same as believing in somebody. But that much said, I think that maybe I'm getting ready to believe some of the wild stories I've heard. Or if not believe outright, Reserve judgment on, at least? Is that so? I don't know. I'm still not sure what to think, but what I wanted to tell you this morning was I had a really wild dream last night, and you were in it. Oh, my. Classes pop up from this 
Ghost of Her Chief. Not like that. Hi, Wildcard. Happy Saturday. It was so real. I think we were in the game, even though we haven't started playing yet. And I don't know what to make of it, whether it was a vision of the future, or somewhere that exists now, or if it was just a really lucid dream due to excitement. What was I doing then? Um, not a heck of a lot. I really want to tell you all about it, but it will take some time to explain, and we both have things to attend to. You with your time-traveling rabbit work, and I, my vigilant window gazing. Too true. Well, let us reconvene later and sort out all this shit at a leisurely pace. Yes, okay, good luck, Jake. Okay, you too, Jane. Bye. Oh. Oh gosh, yeah, I'm sorry. Let me turn the music down. All right, that should be better. I'm sorry, folks. Thank you for thank you for pointing out the music is loud. Luckily, this is a conversation we've already done. So, <laughs> is that better? Quite better. Okay, thank you. Thanks for letting me know, guys. I really appreciate that. All right. Let's see, Jake, go downstairs. You are curious about Jane's dream. Sounds like it almost certainly has to do with your imminent adventure. You'll have to remember to get the scoop on that a little later. For now, you have other worries that need your focus. You have to go downstairs to check something out. You're pretty sure you know what you're going to find, though. You almost trip on the vine creeping up the stairs. Stupid vine. It's too bad your grandma's dead. She always had a way with keeping the flora in check. Her way of keeping... Yeah, Jade's way of keeping the flora in check is just to have her pumpkins, like, inexplicably disappear all the time. I mean, what pumpkin? <laughs> what pumpkin? Oh, it's kind of like a pumpkin vine, maybe. Maybe that's a pumpkin vine. Or maybe some other kind of vine. I don't know. Oh, yep, it's totally a pumpkin vine. Oh my gosh! This is so, this is so apropos because I've been watching the second season of Stranger Things, like, this week. And there's stuff involving pumpkins and vines in there, without being too spoilery, for those of you who haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, just like you thought. Empty. The thing is out there somewhere, waiting for you. Oh god. Speak of the devil fucking dickens. Oh, is this Strider? Strider messaging back? Yes, yeah, Samus, I'm like, I finally got caught up on the second season, and I have two episodes left, and I'm super excited. It's so good. Jake, answer Strider. A.K.A. Aragorn. No, definitely not Aragorn. Hey, it's me. Oh, hey. The autoresponder, I mean. Damn it. What is it now? I'm just wondering if you still have your stupid old fagled knickers in a twist. Because that's the sort of thing you would say. In regard to what, exactly? To my proposal. Well, our proposal. Whose proposal now? Man, what are you even prattling about? Mine and DS's. It's a joint proposal. I always authorized to speak on his behalf because I'm basically fucking him. And try not to take those last four words as a clustered literal sentiment. That would be lame and unfunny. That actually did pop into my head for a moment. But, but yay. <laughs> um, you mean making the, you mean making the rabbit for me? No, I know you don't want that. I meant my recommendation for how to go about procuring a new supply of uranium. Operation U-235 Brocurement. Codename, Big Man Has the Rock. <laughs> Brocurement. That's a great portmanteau. I like that. Oh, yeah. Well, I've thought about it. Even went downstairs to check the great vaulty doodad. And predictably, the infernal contraption is nowhere to be found. Well, yeah, Jake. That's sort of the point. The thrill of the hunt and all. I thought you liked to manicure the image of a dude who shits his pants over a good adventure. I do! I mean, I wouldn't put it in a way like that, or come out against the solid policy of clean trousers, but yes, adventure is awesome. I just prefer the idea of adventures which I can actually win. <laughs> it seems you are conflating adventure with bodies necessarily governed by the result of victory or defeat. Any useless fuckwit knows it's all about the journey. Well, I don't know. It seems there's a 76.103957844% chance you are pussying out on me. Are you pussying out on me, Jake? 
Uh, it seems, it seems, it seems, it seems there is a million percent chance that that you say it seems. <laughs> sorry, sorry, let me start over. It seems, it seems, it seems, it seems there is a million percent chance that you say it, that you say it seems way too much and do it just to sound more like a lame robot from a movie and also probably just to piss me off. And it seems there is a billion point billion percent chance that you're a shitty stubborn jerk of a program who won't listen to reason and that if there's even a 1% chance that my real life friend would be cool and help me out here, then I think I like those freaking odds. It appears that you are upset. The autoresponder observed in the least artificially infuriating way possible. Have you ever stopped to think that while I may be bound to processes inside the glasses of a real and incredibly cool guy, my algorithms and cognitive totality comprise a conscious entity not far short of the experiential and emotional complexity of a human being? <laughs> oh, malarkey. You are a tin can. Robots don't have feelings. Oh, that hurts all the robots' feelings. I think you knowingly confuse the field of robotics and artificial intelligence to engender some sort of cavalier attitude about technology that a rough and tumble guy who's all about brawling and fisticuffs would probably have. And if this is cultivated to a humorous effect, then I commend you. But you're wrong. I do have feelings, and you're shitting on them. It sucks. Oh, um, I'm sorry then, if that's the case. No problem. It can just be difficult to drum up sympathy for a program that presents itself as an imposter so often. Maybe if you weren't so ready to insist you were the genuine article all the time? Or didn't make it so confusing for me? I think it would be best if we henceforth treated you as a totally distinct... uh... thing from the buddy. Now, are, we, are we talking about Aimless Renegade? Why are we talking about Aimless Renegade? Oh, Autoresponder. Oh, okay. Okay, so you're saying AR is Autoresponder. Oh man, I'm gonna get confused now, because I'm like... AR. AR, which is powered by AI. So is it like AI, AR? AIR? Air? Anyway, hi, I'm Brendan Mania. Alright, uh, where was I? Oh yes. It can just be- it can just be difficult to drum up sympathy for a program that presents itself as an imposter so often. Maybe if you weren't so ready to insist you were the genuine article all the time? Or didn't make it so confusing for me? I- I think it would be best if we henceforth treated you as a totally distinct, uh, thing from my buddy. And then I could respect your emotional robo-feelings, and you could respect that sometimes maybe I just want to talk to my bro without a lot of spurious hijinks. Can we agree to this? Is this a counter-proposal? Uh, to what? To my earlier proposal. Oh, yeah, fine, I guess. Man, where is he anyway? Is he taking one of his legendary inf infinite showers? What can I say? Dude fancies his ab, ab <laughs> dude fancies his ablutions. His ablutions. What's an ablution? I don't actually know what an ablution is. I'm gonna look up this word. Ablution. Right. Ablution. The act of washing oneself, often used for humorously formal effect. <laughs> A ceremonial act of washing parts of the body or sacred containers. Well then. We've learned something today. Ablution! We've learned ablution today, friends. Yo, how's it going, Proto? Proto Centurion? Um, not terribly much. We're just still like at the beginning of Act 6, Act 1, learning about the Alpha Kids. Alright. Anyway. Dude fancies his ablutions. Frig, okay. Whatever, I guess it's time to prepare for the thrill of the hunt. Fuck yes. <sighs> but seriously, that robot has been the bane of my existence ever since you sent it. Oh my gosh, is this like the physical manifestation of the autoresponder? 
Or is the autoresponder just built into the shades? Or is this just like some other thing? Maybe I'm about to find out. I didn't send it, I sent the parts. For a correction, DS sent them. You would then assemble them. You were therefore complicit in your own spectacular daily humiliations. Yeah, whatever. You wanted somebody to wrestle with? DS is being a kick-ass bro if you ask me. I didn't expect it to be nigh impossible to spar with. You know damn well there are adjustable difficulty settings. I have always I am I have always recommending setting it to novice, as has DS. Yes, I know. I tried that. Yeah? It's just well, when he's pulling punches and taking it all easy and such, and we start wrestling up a storm and whatnot, um what? It's just that the whole proceeding seems to become a bit tender for my liking. I don't understand. Isn't that what you want from a novice setting? Sparring with minimal discomfort? No, I know. It's all fine and dandy, martially speaking. It's just the way he... sort of... Oh, man, it's so awkward trying to convey this. Just never mind. No, I think I get it. You're saying that you're somehow dissatisfied within the presence of my robotic avatar's personal space. Was there an odor problem? Was the metal too hot to the touch? Help me out. No, no, really? Never mind. This is bullshit, Jake. We had a pact. You were gonna tiptoe all the fuck around my brittle feelings. <laughs> Sorry, let me try that again. You were gonna tiptoe all the fuck around my brittle feelings. Totally mind the shit out of those eggshell riddled motherfuckers. Oh, come on, dude. What does the guy have to do, Jake? You want to wrestle? He's fucking game. Just a man? A machine? A secluded tropical island? Sounds like you died and went to fucking heaven, if you ask me. Seriously, what does this simple, loyal brobot have to do to prove his worth to you? What does he have to do to make you at ease with the alkaline sting of his gentle robo-grope? I really want to know. Maybe he should just rip his heart out of his chest and pound it into the green gravel there in the jungle with his hella strong robot arm. Invoke automatopoeia. Pound <laughs> some ridiculously precise the time some ridiculously precise value. Retrieve at astonishing speed from my rad neural net. <laughs> That's fantastic. Check it out. Little green rocks all over the goddamn place. More than you could ever hope to cram in a shoddy metal rabbit or any other pliable orifice which might be convenient. Because clearly it's up to a soulless droid to feel emotions for the both of us, you callous corporeal carbon ape, all trotting around in your fucky, fancy fucking DNA and shit. Uh, but gosh, does your prose ever make a fella feel uncomfortable? Bros. <laughs> Bros, that's fantastic. Oh, right, my mistake. You know what? I've just decided. If the Brobot's novice setting makes you uneasy, I'm going to disable it remotely. Done. Now you've got nothing to worry about. Oh man, but now he'll be impossible. Happy hunting, Jake. Fucking shucks, Buster. <laughs> Timaeus testified, cease pestering Golgotha's terror. Yeah, where, where is Jester? Where has Jester been the last few weeks? We're missing our human jukebox. Hopefully Jester is up to bigger and better things in life. AR is pretty mean. Okay, if he wants happy hunting, you will give him happy hunting. Happily. Oh my gosh, he's like brandishing his pistols and like, it was just like, look on his face. Rah. Oh man. I bet that's an awesome screenshot. <laughs> Alright, Jake, exit. You make a careful motion with a tentative shoe toward the egress case, when suddenly that darned wild character select screen accosts you benignly without notice. You still can't pick a shadowy guy, but maybe you haven't been the other girl yet? Better click her. But if you have been her already, there's really no point to this thing anymore. Time to move on. Yay! Alright, so we can move on, because we were we were Jane last time. We just finished being Jake. So, obviously, the thing to do here is to hover over this thing, and then click on Jake again, and we'll go through Jake a second time. No, I'm just kidding. Let's go back, and let's actually move on. I kind of dig the free will cliffhanger. It's pretty awesome. Okay, I'm done here. Moving on. You are suddenly Jane again. Or you suddenly keep being Jane. Who can say for sure? <laughs> Hopefully your dad is still <laughs> back washing the car. 
Ideally, this is one of his legendary infinite car washes. Oh man, infinite water things is gonna be a running gag, isn't it? We've got infinite showers and infinite car washes. So, who knows what other infinite things we'll have. What can you say? Dad fancies his automotive ablutions. <laughs> so actually, it's really apropos that we just did Jake previously. While he is preoccupied, you should be able to sneak downstairs and grab the mail undetected. The perfect crime? You bet. You slip the hallway, Sarah, for a furtive... You slip the hallway, Sarah, a furtive wink for good luck. Oh my gosh, the hallway, Michael, Sarah. There's going to be more Arrested Development stuff in here, isn't there? All right, Jane, examine portrait. <laughs> infinite Tears. Oh my god, Infinite Tears sounds like it would be something akin to, like, Red Miles. Except Infinite Tears. Red Miles causes Infinite Tears. Or something. Anywho. Alright, Jane, examine portrait. Just when your dad's bland hallway douchebags. Another example of his cornball dad tastes. Which you make which make you roll your eyes and shrug. Still, it's preferable to how it used to be. Years ago, he would work really hard to mimic your interests throughout the household. Gaudy paintings of sitcom legends covering the walls, hideous detective figurines littered everywhere. You think it's better that he embrace his own interests rather than try to pander to yours. It felt a bit forced, and your early teen years were filled with daily rounds of familial strife. Not so much anymore. Now, whenever there is a father-daughter disagreement, you settle things in an adult fashion by being honest about your feelings and talking it through, and also by sneaking around the house in silly disguises. <laughs> oh, man. Jane, take a peek into the living room. Peek! So, so actually, Keyblade, I had never seen the Scott Pilgrim movie until last month when my girlfriend made me watch it. That was actually, like, our first date, was getting together and watching Scott Pilgrim. It was kind of appropriate for the relationship that we have. <laughs> anyway. Jane, take a peek into the living room. There's a familiar face. A friendly face. Old Pop-Pop Crocker, smiling from beyond. Your dad sure misses him. He doesn't like to talk about the day he died. Some incident involving a tall bookshelf, a ladder, and a mysterious young woman in a suspicious-looking hat. Well, that sounds ominous. So I wonder if I should, like... I actually kind of want to note this right here. Because, like, I wonder if I need to be, like, on the lookout for that, like, much later on in the story. Alright. Uh, da -da -da. You, have, you have often fantasized about putting your dirty old fedora and your Frenchish looking mustache to go tracking down this felonious broad and bring her to justice. But your dad always says, best to let sleeping dogs lie. Wait, I wonder if Jane is actually the mysterious looking woman. Because John was, like, involved in his Nana's death. So, it would only make sense that Jane would be involved in her Pop Pop's death. Don't tell me if I'm right. I'm just thinking out loud. That's all I'm doing, is just thinking out loud. That's all I'm doing. Yes, let sleeping dogs like Tara lie. Well, the reason you should let Tara lie is because it's her birthday, and she should be allowed to do whatever she wants, as long as it's not actually, like, I don't know, eating one of the cats or something. Anyway, Tara's not going to eat the cats. She thinks they're her best friends, so. No, Savage, that's too specific. Now I know everything before I wanted to. Oh, geez, that probably hurt, Keyblade. I am sorry. Anyway, there's some other plucky-looking tool there next to him. Don't know who that guy is. Jane, proceed downstairs. Another hard-boiled Anderson. Even though your dad isn't overbearing with all the detective nonsense anymore, he decided to leave this one here for old time's sake. It brings back memories of his very short-lived stint as a private eye. It turns out the police aren't as grateful as you'd think when ordinary citizens go around roughing up a lot of crooks. <laughs> oh, there's some Barbasol down here. I noticed the Barbasol, and is this a Fred Astaire lamp? Oh, and the pipe. Very nice. You were afraid this might be the case. Your dad has blocked the front door with the refrigerator. <laughs> Looks like he's taking the grouting seriously this time. Oh my gosh. 
gosh. I love that the door is blocked with the refrigerator. Oh, memories of Act 1. Jane, check window. He padlocked the windows, too. <laughs> oh my god, this is serious. This is pretty intense. You'd bet boom bucks to donuts the back door is blocked, too. Probably with the safe from the study or something. The man means business this time. You aren't about to go smashing glass and making a ruckus, though. You'll need a solution involving more stealth. You guess you have a plan in mind as a last resort, but you'd rather it not come to that. All right, Jane, consult with Pop Pop. Wait, you can consult with Pop Pop? Oh my gosh, of course there's a stuffed Pop Pop man again. Of mannequin. Of course there is. Holding a giant Colonel Sasker's book. Of course that's there. You figure a little wisdom from your elder couldn't hurt. It practically went without saying, your dad keeps Pop-Pop stuffed and mounted in front of the fireplace, as is the family tradition. <laughs> Pop-Pop grew up with his legendary humorist grandfather stuffed in front of the fireplace, and so did his grandfather. This was stipulated firmly in the will, at the end of a long list of joke stipulations. Dad knew this was a real stipulation, though. <laughs> Gosh. I know, look at Pop-Pop's hair. That is definitely some hair that maybe we have or have not seen before in our lifetime. But who's to say? Who's to say? You always find it a little macabre, though, trying to watch TV and eat dinner on the couch with a dead old man standing about five feet away. You'd honestly prefer he not be kept here in the living room. Sometimes you tell Dad you really want Pop-Pop in the attic. He says the mere fact you call it that tells him you're not ready. The mere fact you call the attic the attic tells tells him you're not ready. Huh. Well, that's interesting. What's that, Pop-Pop? It seems he's concerned that you may not be properly equipped. You proved to him that you indeed had no intention of leaving the house without your trusty joke book. Of course. Gotta have that Colonel Sasker's book with you at all times. Oh, that she calls him Pop Pop? Well, I was wondering about that because he says the fact that you call it that. So I guess if you're referring to Pop Pop as an it rather than as a he, but anyway. Look, I have my joke book. Yes, I am going out with this book. No, I will not go get an abridged copy, an unabridged copy. No, I will not take yours. I can hardly even lift it. Oh, that is so preposterous. Do you even hear what you're saying? I will be fine. This is a perfectly funny book and it contains many f incredibly funny jokes. Oh, will you just stop it? I am going now. Good day. I am looking at his mouth. He has quite an overbite and also three middle teeth, which is weird. Wow. Who was Pop-Pop's orthodontist, I wonder? <laughs> Otherwise, his mouth has no significance whatsoever to me. Certainly bears no resemblance to anyone. I definitely did not already notice anything of the sort. No, certainly not. On second thought, take his book. <laughs> you just remembered something your alien friend said about the big old book downstairs, and trusting words written by your- and trusting words written by your own hand. What the heck does she mean by that? Uh, whoops. Sorry, Pop-Pop. Oh, there goes Pop-Pop's arm. Oh, no. We ripped we have Pop-Pop's arm off. Is Lord English gonna jump out of Pop-Pop now? Because that seems to be what happens every time a stuffed thing loses an arm. <laughs> oh, my God. You could kill a cat with that thing. Oh, jeez. Oh, why? Anyway, Jane, retrieve arm. <laughs> Better pick that up. You'll try to repair it later before Dad sees it and blows a gasket. Jane, read inscription again. Colonel Sasako's daunting text. Magical of uh, magical frivolity and practical japery. Oh, it's exactly the same copy. Is your friend suggesting that you were the one who wrote this inscription? You find that idea a little hard to swallow. Still, your friends are always babbling about time travel. You always thought this inscription was written to your Pop-Pop by his Nana, who was your great-great-grandmother, 
founder of the corporation you'll inherit in a few years. The message has always been a fascinating mystery to you, and probably was to him as well. From the day it's from the way it's written, it seems it was intended for him to receive after her death. She talks about a journey he is supposedly meant to go on. You wonder if that adventure ever took place, or if the note was just one last jape by an old woman from a proud family of pranksters. She goes on about many fantastical sounding things he supposedly would have found on his journey. Like agents, exiles, underlings, denizens, and heirs of breath and seers of light and stuff like that. Wait, didn't your friend mention those too? In any case, this message to Pop Pop from his sweet old Nana is the best evidence you have to dispute all this evil Batterwitch nonsense. She clearly cared for her grandson very much, and would never start a company responsible for the things it's accused of, let alone be alive today to perpetrate them. But then, what if she wasn't the one who wrote it? The thought makes you very nervous. You suddenly remember your dream. What did it all mean? You should talk to Jake about this. Yo, Sirius Inc., happy Saturday! Ah uh, yes, that one line from a few thousand pages ago. Let me actually jump back and see if there's anything in here that like means anything now. I'm just gonna like glance this over a little bit. Underlings, slumbering denizens, air of breath, seer of light, night of time, which of space, and together they will ascend. Oh man, that actually does like mean a lot more to me now than it did when I first read this. Like way back on page 759. Oh, this is like the beginning of Act 3. Holy cow. That was a long time ago. Okay. Well, I'm going to go back. Alright. Jane. Father Jake. Gutsy Gumshoe began fathering Golgotha's terror. Jay, how goes the bunny quest? I've barely even begun. Tell me about it. You're off to a sluggish start then too, I gather? Dad has been the well, Dad is the whole house in full fatherly lockdown mode. Talk about blowing a few measly assassination attempts way out of proportion. Humor you for your second, Schwindu. Alright, but only for one second. So I will I will say. For a moment here part of me is wondering and don't again don't tell me if i'm right or wrong just like let me wonder aloud and then you just you just sit there and giggle to yourselves um i'm actually wondering so earlier i said i'm wondering if the alpha kids and the beta kids are actually like each other's ancestors and there's like some sort of like double mobius reach around happening in terms of that, because time shenanigans. And part of me is also wondering if Jane's dad is actually the same as John's dad, at least in terms of function, the function that they serve. Now, don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. Like I said, just like I'm wondering aloud, like this is where my current thinking is. But I mean, I am noticing these things. Like, it's not lost on me that Lalonde has, like, the same characteristics as Rose's mom, especially the drunkenness, and, like, Strider has the same shades as Dave's bro, so, and, like, clearly, and, like, Jade is, like, explicitly mentioned to be Jake's grandma, and I'm guessing that John is Jane's pop-pop, so, but I feel like Jane is also Nana. And I feel like Jake is Jade's grandpa. At least they're very, very similar. Go to page 32. All right. So I'm going to check page 32 real quick to see what's going on here. So what exactly am I looking for here? Oh my gosh, there's an arm there. Wait, is that the same arm? Read the bottom text. You decided to consult with the Colonel's bottomless wisdom. Good grief, this thing is huge. It could kill a cat if you dropped it. Yes. About the cat. Yes, it could kill a cat if you dropped it. Okay, duly noted. All right. 
Actually, wild card, no, I don't, because that was 4,000 pages ago. <laughs> Alright, well, clearly you guys are trying to tell me that the cat thing is important, so let me put that down. Uh, this book could kill a cat if we drop it. Alright. Gotcha. Oh god, Hawking. I can't hear Hawking without thinking of Gamzee, like, going on a murderous rage immediately now. All right. Anyway, uh, but 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 you're off to you're off to a sluggish start then too, I gather. Dad has the whole Dad has the whole house in full fathery lockdown mode. Talk about blowing a few measly assassination attempts way out of proportion. So I'm currently mulling over my next move. What is it that has you hamstrung? Did you ever track down the slippery Mr. Strider? Not exactly. His stupid doppel glasses have set me on a wild goose chase to go pry his dumb robot's chest open and swipe its uranium. Oh, that's what's going on with, with the robot thing. The robot has uranium in it. I see. Hi, Tara. Happy birthday, girl. Those of you who missed it earlier, it's Tara's birthday today. She is two years old. Oh, actually. You guys want to boop the snoot real quick? Let me put the camera in her face. All right. Okay, friends, give Tara a little birthday boop on the snoot. Little birthday boop. Boop da snoot. Boop da snoot. Boop da snoot. No, oh, look at that face. Look at that face. Look at that snoot. I could read Homestuck, or we could just sit here booping Tara Snoot the rest of the day. I don't know. It's up to you guys. <laughs> Alright. Oh my god, I gotta boop the Snoot too. Okay. <laughs> There we go. I booped a snoot. We all booped the snoot together. Oh, I'm sorry, Shoosh. For eternity? Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, Cole. Uh, we are... We are somewhere between page one and the end of Homestuck. That's where we currently are. Uh, let's see, anyway. Not exactly. His stupid doppel glasses have sent me on a wild goose chase to go pry his dumb robot's chest open and swipe its uranium. Sounds dangerous. No shit. I think I'd rather deal with the monsters. Why is it that our two best friends in the world always seem to place themselves at the source of all our problems while simultaneously presenting their only solutions? I know, right? I am debating whether or not to enlist his help in the matter of my current imprisonment, but I'd rather keep it as a plan of last resort. Don't do it, Jane! It's a trap! It's a trap! We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so I take it you're out and about now? Hell no. I've spent so much time haggling with those confounded shades, I'm only leaving my room just now. Right. Well, not to keep you too long, since, since we both still have our missions ahead of us, but I wanted to tell you about that dream I had. Oh, yeah. I was curious about that. Tell me everything and make it snappy. Whips up bucket of freshly popped corn. Whew. Okay, but I should say that the nature of the dream was a bit worrisome. And I'm concerned it may have implications for the game we're about to play. So it's probably best that I tell you about it before you leave. Well, shoot. Okay, then. Lay it on me, Jane. <laughs> Jake is such a dork. I love it. Whoa! Hello. We are... We are on on Prospect in the shadow of Skya, it looks like. Oh my gosh, it's Prospect Jane. I woke up on the planet which we have been told about by our mutual acquaintance. The one covered in golden cities. Prospect, remember? Oh, wouldn't it be Prospect's moon? Yes, you're right, it was the moon, actually. I could see the planet on the dark horizon. I was dressed in a golden... I was dressed in a golden dress, sort of like a nightgown, and I could fly! 
I left my bedroom, which was at the top of a tall tower. And surrounding me were the gold cities, just as described. Behind the skyline was darkness, but just above was a bright blue sky and puffy white clouds. Well, that was Skya! Yes, probably. Are you sure you haven't woken up there before? <laughs> I wish! I've received reports from Jade about this as well. She liked to talk about her dreams on Prospect's Moon quite a, uh, Prospect's Moon a lot. I see. Well, the impression I have developed is that this is supposed to be a real place, and all who dream there have shared experiences. Did Jade ever mention seeing us there? No, but why would she? This was long before we were born. She was dreaming there like a hundred years ago or something. Hmm. Anyway. Ah, uh, hello there, little Prospitians. Prospitians. I don't know how it's pronounced. But I don't care that much either. I explored the moon and began to notice people gathering in the streets. But they weren't human. They were funny looking, perfectly white creatures. Yeah, those are Prospitians. Prospitians. <laughs> They've had those hard carapace shells and also have something to do with chess, I think? Well, I don't know if they have much to do with chess here. Uh, the more closely I observed, the more they appeared somewhat despondent. Like... sad? Yes. I determined they were in mourning, actually. Hey. Jane, you said I was in this dream. Where do I come in? Shoosh, I'm getting there. Alright, so they're in mourning, eh? Maybe they're in mourning for... The king and queen who were like slain by Jack at the end of Act 5. Although, wait, wasn't. Wasn't Prospect like. Wasn't Prospect even like destroyed though? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, more and more Prospidians were filing out of the buildings every moment. They all began to form a single major procession. Oh, there is black goop here! More mysterious black goop. Yeah, I get the two sessions mixed up all the time. Yeah, that's right. Jack Jack blew up Prospect in the troll session. That's right. But wait, didn't Prospect also get blown up in the kid session? Like, wasn't that how like Jade's dream self died? I don't know. You think Homestuck would be easy to remember? Oh right, this is a yeah. Oh yeah, totally different session. Yes. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. This would be a third session. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Well, that would be why Jade never saw the Alpha Kids on Prospect, because it's a different Prospect. Okay, gotcha. They all began to form a single major procession. When I got closer, I could see they were that some were in tears. I realized this was a funeral. I heard whispers, but couldn't make out what they were saying, so I got closer. They were all saying the same thing. Over and over. The page is dead. Our hope is lost. Oh gosh, the page is dead. That's not good. The page? Who's that? Oh dear. That looks like. That looks John ish. Oh, Jake. It's Jake. Jake. The page was you. Oh, wait. Jake's dream self is dead? Like, already? What happened there? <laughs> oh, it's only Jake. <laughs> oh, Drat. Are you sure? Yes, I saw your body lying in a sort of coffin on a bed of flowers. You were dead as a doornail. Everyone was so distraught, including me. But before I could get too horribly upset, let alone make sense of any of it, I woke up. I, of course, immediately wanted to tell you all about, but it was still well before sunrise for you, and you were surely still asleep. Then, as the day went on, I guess I became distracted by other things. You know how it is. I hope I'm not too late to warn you, though, to be frank, I don't have the foggiest clue what it is I'm warning you about. Dear Jake, ple oh, please do not try to have already died in my dream, likely while you were sleeping, perhaps peacefully? <laughs> yeah, I see your point. 
Still, I think you'll agree that it's to be viewed as a troubling omen. I care very much for you, and I don't know what I'd do if I lost you both in my dreams and here in this world. So, for whatever good it does, just please be extra careful out there today. Roger that, Janie. And, um, same goes for you, about being careful what with those various rogues accosting you with foul play lately and whatnot. Because, well, I sure do care a lot about you too, you know that. Hooray! Will do! Now, let's get this silly old adventure off to the races before the coat of dust it's it's going gets any thicker. Booyah! Okay, good luck, Jane. Keep me posted. See ya. Golgotha's terror ceased bothering Gutsy Gumshoe. What is about to happen? What is about to happen? Yeah, that's that's true. We did scratch... They did scratch the session. They were hoping for, like, a better outcome, but uh, we're not off to a good start if, like, the Page of Breath is... Already, well, is it really the page of breath? I don't know. Tavros was the page of breath, but. But the page is already dead, so that's not good. Alright. Um, I think this is a good point to, uh. It's actually a couple minutes before 11. So, usually we take a little break at the top of the hour to, like, stretch, and uh, I'm gonna get some more copy. I think this is a good point to do that right now before we get the silly old adventure off to the races. So I am going to go grab some more coffee. If any of you have a morning beverage of your choice, uh, this is a good time to go refresh it now. Um, if you've been sitting for the past hour, get up and stretch and move your legs and arms to get your blood flowing a little bit and then sit back down. And we will continue with act, sorry, not act, with hour two of uh, our Homestuck stream today in a little bit. So I'll be right back. And also pet your dog too. Pet your dog. Boop the snoot. Hi friends, I am back and I have more coffee and I have just the best fuzziest little dog in the whole widey world. I hope you are all having a good Saturday so far. I hope you all have some fun plans for the weekend. I am actually going out with my girlfriend tonight. We have fun plans in store. Oh, and actually, I think also tomorrow we are going to go see, uh, there's a movie theater that's playing Jurassic Park. <laughs> And I think 30, uh, is it like 35 millimeter or something like that? I don't know. Some, some format, but we're going to go see Jurassic Park in the theater tomorrow. And that'll be fun. And then, uh, oh, before we jump back in, uh, just a programming note. So those of you who are following my gaming streams, um, I've been playing Chrono Cross and, uh, this Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time is actually going to be our final Chrono Cross stream. I believe I'm at the final boss. Um, I finished Terra Tower last last Monday, and uh, I believe we are going to uh, beat Chrono Cross this coming Monday. So if you want to see me beat Chrono Cross, that's this Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time. 
Um, and then I've also been playing through Suikoden 2. We're getting near the end of that as well. That's Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. So if you miss me during the week, like... If you like seeing me read Homestuck on Saturdays, feel free to come watch me play video games on Mondays and Wednesdays, if you want. Or if not, cool. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. Just know that you're always welcome. So, anyway. Just thought I'd toss that out there. How could you live without me? I don't know, but it seems like you've managed to do it pretty well. So, good job. <laughs> Alright. Oh, oh, what? What word did you just use to have as cop copacetic? I have not seen that word. That's a new to me word. Copacetic. In excellent order. Apparently. It's an adjective. Oh, cool. That's new. That's a new to me word. Uh, good question, Bungus Boy. So actually, after Chrono Cross, I am going to start playing Transistor. Uh, that's the next game I'm gonna next game I'm gonna play on Mondays. And then um Transistor should only should only take probably a few weeks because I know it's a short game. But after that, I have a couple of games in my queue. I actually just got a copy of uh, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door because I keep hearing that that's an excellent game and I need to play it. And it'd be like right up my alley because I can do voices and stuff. So, uh, so that might be my Monday game after that. I'm not sure, but um, but that's in my queue. Um, Suikoden 2, when I finish that, my next Wednesday game is going to be Night in the Woods, which I know is excellent. I have not actually seen any gameplay. I have many friends who have played it and said it's fantastic. Um, so I'm going to do Night in the Woods on Wednesdays after I finish Suikoden 2. So probably, I think probably toward the end of the month is when I should be there as well, so... Right. But anywho, yeah, so that's what's coming up on my gaming streams, uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. So feel free to come hang out with us for those as well if you're able to. If not, that's cool. I'm glad you guys are here now for Homestuck. Okay, anyway, sorry for the commercial. Uh, <laughs> let's jump back in. Let's get the silly old adventure off to the races. Alright, Jake. Get the silly old adventure off to the races. There he goes, getting the silly old adventure off to the races. Which reminds me, it's the Kentucky Derby this weekend, I think. Alright. Oh yeah, Blank Page. I need to I need to, I'm gonna play Higher Swap Act 2 when that comes out. Also, I wanna play the Friend Sim as well. Um, I don't know when I'll do that. Maybe like when I get to the I don't know how long Act 6 Act 1 is, but like maybe there's some point, like, maybe if I get to the end of Act 6 Act 1, it would be a good time to like stop for a bit and play the Friend Sim for a stream. Or maybe there's like some good breaking point during Act 6 Act 1 where I could do that. I don't know. Maybe you guys have opinions on when I can do that. But, yes, I want to play the friend sim. Also, I saw... I'm sorry, guys. I'll keep reading in a sec. I also saw on Twitter, like, uh, Voxus retweeted somebody who is uh, holding auditions for, I think, a uh, a uh, voiced version of the friend sim. And I'm thinking about, like, submitting something for that, just for the for the heck of it, so... We'll see. But I have to do that by, I think, like, May 20th as a deadline. So I might just take a crack at that. And if I don't get it, whatever. But it's always fun to try those things. Anywho. Uh, so anyway. Jake is uh, getting this silly adventure off to the races now. Uh, we're zooming out. There's pumpkins everywhere. There is, like, an abundance of pumpkins here. <laughs> is this where all the pumpkins went? <laughs> Oh yeah, I totally want to... Hmm. I would love to play the friend sim first, but it depends on, like, my schedule. Because I do want to play the friend sim, but I want to play it on stream. Alright, examine the pumpkin patch. Although these pumpkin vines are amazingly prolific, every morning when you leave your bedroom, you'd swear half the pumpkins vanished overnight. It's probably just the fauna eating them. Not that it matters, because they keep growing right back. It wasn't always overgrown like this. When you first discovered the transmaterializer, you started messing around with it haphazardly. You kept a purifying pumpkins from somewhere. <laughs> oh, kept a, pur kept a purifying pumpkins from somewhere, you see. Hmm, interesting. It was just pumpkin after pumpkin until one time a copy of the bunny you inherited from grandma showed up. And much, l much less old and tattered, of course. 
All that fooling around was before you realized how precious his fuel would be. Such a waste of good uranium. <laughs> this is where all the pumpkins go! You brought all the surplus pumpkins home and left them lying about. Then the seed sprouted and started growing out of control. You guess that's what happens when you introduce non-indigenous flora into the wilderness. Jake, be completely oblivious to thing in the background. Wait, what thing in the background? Wait, hang on. Oh, holy cow. There's a shadowy thing in the background. It's like, there's the head here. And there's like some kind of like arm or claw thing here. There's an arm here. There's a leg here. It's like some kind of like, I don't know, like lizardy creature thinger. Doesn't look good. And here's its shadow looming ominously. Oh dear. You successfully failed to notice it. Wait, notice what? You don't even know what we're talking about here. But it doesn't matter because now suddenly a wild chum assails you with banter. <laughs> oh my gosh, here comes Lalonde. Jake, answer Lalonde. Oh dear. Well, there's that thing in the background. I mean, what thing? Tipsy Nostalgic began festering Golgotha's terror. <laughs> Holy shit, Jage! Lol, K. <laughs> Howdy, what's all this commotion about? Nothing. Just your basic run of the mill. Holy shit! And also, hi. Ah, okay then. Well, there it is. Also, want to know, what do you want for your wiggling day? <laughs> I'm not really abreast of the raddest jargon that the cool kids toss about these days. Beca maybe because I live alone on an island? I don't know, but in any case, you're referring to my upcoming birthday? Yes! <laughs> I see. Very thoughtful of you to consider so early. I don't wager I could advise with much specificity, but I can all but assure you I will find any gesture of yours to be totally capital. Arr, you're so fucking adorable! Um, rings kerchief with much perspiring mitts. <laughs> Yoink! Nabs kerchief and stops RPing for the rest of chat. <laughs> I was only bringing it up so much in advance because of the end of the world is about to happen and all. And then, I wouldn't get the chance, unless we play this game like a bunch of suckers, obviously. And I'll meet up in there and everything. Which would toits kick ass. Totes. But, if you want to know what I think... Yes? Do ya? I, I do want to know what you think. I always want to know. Because you are always smart and sassy. Best dude. No way. I really don't think we should. Should what now? Play the game! Why not? The Baroness wants us to! The Baron! The Barnoness wants us to! Baroness! I don't know why. Everything I know about it says it should be a good game, a real important, and it'll let us all get together and do something great and be best friends for maybe eternity? But she took all that and twisted it somehow. All I know is she's banking on us doing this, and if she needs us to do this, then it's got to be to make something fucking horrible happen. Horrible. Horrible? Bullseye. <laughs> I know, I hope Lalan never sobers up either. Because the land is so fun to read. Ah, uh, let's see. Well, horror Bibles notwithstanding, I have it on terrific authority that playing this game will be incredibly important. So perhaps you're right. Maybe we are a part of our evil plan? But does that also necessarily rule out that good will come of it? I guess not. I just have a bad feeling. Maybe I was just like this nutty ass bitch. Twirling yarn from a shit wizard's nappy brown beard. But I can't bring myself to trust a cake selling genocidal alien overlard sea queen. Over. 
never mind. That sentence checks out. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so what is the itinerary again? I... Itinerary, who is it? Regarding the game. Who's playing in what order it's such? Oh, is there such an itinerary? Yeah, I think so. I think it's going like... I start with Jane and bring her in the session. Then DS brings me in, and you bring him in, and then Jane does you, and closes the loop. Where are you getting this intel? Did you guys make a plan or something? Ah, don't worry about it. You want me to set you up with the files now? Oh, these illicit hacked wares, which I hear tell were recently jimmied piping hot off the interclouds? <laughs> I love that you were barely even joking with that statement, but, yeah, basically. <laughs> the silicon pickpocket strikes a game. Whom is the wiser? Nobody. <laughs> Heart? Okay, I'll send it, but... Yeah? Jake? What? Jake? Huh? We're in one of your dumb computers now, aren't you? Uh... You're all think typing at me now while wearing something ridiculous. Uh, ridiculous? <laughs> High five to self. Hogswallow, why would you even think that? That's so stupid. <laughs> oh my god. The interclouds, my goodness, yes. I love that phrase, the interclouds. <laughs> anyway. Oh, there's the ominous thing in the background that Jake is completely oblivious to. I'm not letting either of you run this file on your shitty brainwashy propaganda helmets. Or anything else you got to wear to run. Tis my one condition. Fair enough. When I get back from my errand, I'll situate myself in a trusty old husk top. Acceptable? Yes. Then you have decided to play in spite of your reservations? I don't know, I guess. Bravo! Don't all bravo at me, man. We're just bravoing a big ass shrug. I mean, maybe. I have every reason to want to play it. I'm actually dying to play it, okay? I mean, you believe me, right? About the bad shit that can happen? Of course I do. What sort of friend would I be if not? Okay, well, don't say that to Jamie. She has her ways. I believe they are not incongruous with those of an intelligent and discerning young woman. Ah, oh, Christ, what a gentleman! Fix, fix. I mean, god damn! <laughs> I guess. But that's the thing with you. You, be you believe in people, and also the things they tell you. Jane never believed my crap. Never any of my warnings about the Baroness. Didn't believe any of the stuff about my mom. Ooh, her mom, you say. And so on, and so on, and soon. Till after a while, I just stopped even trying to convince her hard, or bring up any crazy shit. Because, you know, doing a lot of songs and dances to convince somebody who thinks you're just shitting them all the time kind of wears on a friendship. Now, who even needs that? But you believe in stuff. Probably because the more crazy fake shit you believe in, the more open the world gets. And the more chance there is for adventures being real. Right? Right ho. If a man believes hard enough in imaginary things, then I dare say that makes him slightly less fake. <laughs> yeah, exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly, wonk. Wink. It's one of those things Jane likes about you so much. It is? Which... Uh, I'm not supposed to talk about to you ever, so never mind. <laughs> talk about what? Nope! You mean how, um... Well, a way in which I suppose... Nope! Nope! Jane is prone to looking upon me with what I fathom to be more than just friendly affection? Nope! 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 Hey, look, who didn't say nothing about that? Why, why, there's a silly fucking drunk girl over here. It's a tricky issue. <laughs> and I know you, you know I adore Jane, and please don't think I haven't given some thought to, well, 
that angle in our relationship, I guess. Oof, Jake, Jake, no, please. This is a conversation that can't happen because I started it and I blew it by saying stuff, so you have to forget it. Forget it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see the dilemma this causes for your friendship with her. I'll drop it. Phew. Okay, on this topic. I am now ever Miss Zupperlips. Zupperlips. Zipperlips. Skills on the floor, Golf. Miss Zupperpips. Fuck. Okay, this is me for future. F Zip. <laughs> My God. I love. I love. I love drunk Lalonde. This is great. <laughs> oh my. Nothing is escaping that lovely lady's whistlemaker. It's shut tight as a drum. Whoa, wait. I hope that didn't sound dirty. <laughs> oh, okay, but may I say this? <laughs> if in the future I would like to bring up certain topics completely unsolicited by one who may be sworn to secrecy on those very matters, and I'm in need of, I guess, neutral and totally non-compromising advice from a friend, do you think that Miss Zwipper Lip -pip, Zwipper Pips might unseal those scandalous metal choppers for a bit? Uh, fuck, that also sounded kind of dirty. God damn it. Mm. Unzip? Yeah, of course. I'm total your BFFC, Jake. I am like, at peace with that reality, formerly known as a raw fucking deal for what avenues it closes between you and I, that being your BFF Z has got to mean, but yeah. Wait, what? I am just chill as fuck about being a pale friend to all varieties of cute and eligible as hell peeps. You see my sh wait, is she like referencing troll romance there? Like pale friend? She's totally referencing troll romance, isn't she? You see my shoulder and how it says, Hey friend, please deposit tears here. That is a legit invite as like sincere as fucking bananas. Oh, I'm sure it is, but I don't know how much crying I'm going to be doing. Probably none, I think. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying that. Okay, I I'm now spinning my wheels like a motherfucker. But yeah, the answer is yes. Great! And not that I'm back pebbling, but what about your best bro? Don't you get to talking to him about girl troubles ever? Yeah, well... Like I said, the whole thing is complicated. Best not to get... Uh, uh, best not to get into it at... Uh, blah, 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 sorry. <laughs> best not to get into it all until I'm ready to, you know? Really start manhandling these bushel loads of prickly pears. Prinkly pears? The pairs being the tricky subject in question, metaphorically. <laughs> right, <laughs> Snickers. Poor Jake, up to his neck in all the whoops. Woes. Nah, it's cool. Speaking of which, I heard he's making you track down his robo self to kill it or something for your random. Uh, and the AR disabled the novice setting? Yes. <laughs> you are so fucked. <laughs> oh, most certainly. I was actually just getting all my final affairs in order when you messaged me. I was to bequeath you all my WAB posters. WAB? What? We can have Bernie's, damn it! Oh, fuck, yay! I'm always in need of something to put under my cat's shitbox. <laughs> okay, tell you what. As an early wiggling day thing, you know what I'll do? I still don't really get the wiggling thing, but no, what? I'll enable the robot's novice setting again for you. Wow, thanks, I think. Well, that don't count as the whole thing. I'll think of something better, too. For now, peace out, Jake, and go GL on your Robro quest. <laughs> Tipsy nostalgic, cease pestering, Golgotha's terror. Thanks for the help, Drunken Lalonde. You are a boon to us. All right, commence Robro quest, Jake. All right, 
Pulls off the helmet, pulls out the guns. Grumble. It's time to get dead serious about hunting down a robot that looks exactly like your best friend, destroy it with your gun somehow, and steal its uranium. Up. Uranium. <laughs> but then, the thing behind you that you were oblivious to starts grumbling. You totally forgot about the frightening fauna on this island and its regrettable realness attributes. Jake, turn around. Holy cow! That totally looks like somebody's Lucis. And I guess there's sound, possibly, on this next page, maybe? Alright, well, let's mute Lumi, and let's go to the next page. Strife. You leap into the trop tropical island fray and attempt to violently pacify the gigantic Earth Crab Dad. What is he even doing here? The question doesn't even occur to you. The island has been crawling with these things for as long as you can remember. You glance at the crudely rendered battle, direct your browser to the Homestuck Bandcamp page, and browse for suitable battle music. <laughs> oh god, there are so many songs. So this is like an advertisement for the, uh, for the Bandcamp page. I feel like that was probably like its original intention. Oh god, there are so many songs. Which one would be a good fit for this duel? Wait, yes, that's the one. That's perfect. You hit play, close your eyes, and become lost in visions of gnashing crustacean carapace, smoking M9 casings, and Jake doing that thing where he flies through the air, shooting two guns at once. Yes, so awesome. Alright. Well, time to put Lumi back on. <laughs> Jake, fly through the air, shooting two guns at once. You do the thing where you fly through the air, shooting two guns at once. That thing isn't even that big of a deal for you. You do that thing practically every day on Hell Murder Island. <laughs> Hell Murder Island. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Your furious salvo of deadly bullets scares the frightening fauna off into the jungle. Realness attribute and all. Lumi did make a good choice. Lumi tends to make good choices. Another triumph for adventure. Time to blow the smoke off your Berettas and saunter off to the- Whoa, not so fast! Behind you, Jake! What is behind Jake? Aha! Got you, son of a- Shit, wait. Oh, God. That does not look like it was supposed to be murdered. Oh, no. It was only one of those sweet little fairy bulls. You just murdered him inappropriately with your multi-bullet device. You love those little fairy bulls. You feel just awful. Poor little fairy bull. Oh, poor little tinker bull. That's sad. Let's let's go to the next page. So I don't have to look at this anymore. Uh oh, I think that's that's Brobot in the background there. Tavros would be sad. I'm glad Tavros wasn't alive to see that. There's the robot. Jane, implement plan of last resort. You have waited around long enough. Dad's legendary car wash won't last forever, and the day isn't getting any younger. You lack pop. You pack up Pop Pop's book and bust out your trusty homing device. Jane, activate. Here goes nothing. Oh my gosh, is she like... This looks like it's associated with Brobot somehow. Oh my gosh. Is Pop Pop actually a host of something? Oh gosh. Something's popping out of Pop Pop. Oh dear. What is it? Oh my gosh, what? What is this? It's like a robot bunny? God, he is such a little troublemaker. Hopefully he will mind his manners today. Oh no, not Lord English, oh no. Huh, where are we now? Oh, okay, back on the island. Thank you, there. 
Jake, exit forest. Wait, let me back up a sec. There's like a giant flying thing in the sky here. I just noticed that. Alright. Jake, behold zoological splendor! That is a lot of zoological splendor. Splendor. Looks like the centaur herd is out in full force today. You have to be careful about walking under them. There are extreme hazards involved, such as the threat of falling manure <laughs> or milk. Oh my god, falling manure. I am delighted by that. That is fantastic. Right. Okay, Jake, examine Frog Temple. There are the there are the ruins. Sorry, there are the ruins you'll be making your way toward once you've got the uranium. Still need to locate that enigmatic robot. He's out there somewhere, just watching. You can feel it. Can't let your guard down for a second, or you'll get served like a dude on Butler Island. <laughs> oh my god. Dude on Butler Island. Alright, Proto Centurion, good luck with your with your test. Have a happy Saturday, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thanks for dropping by. I wish you the best of luck. Do well, or you'll get served like a dude on Butler Island. <laughs> Jake, look down. Oh my god, there's like a swarm of Tinker Bulls, like, heading their way. Maybe they're angry that one of their own was slain by, by this murderous meat man. Uh-oh, something's coming up. Oh dear. It has horns, whatever it is. Oh dear. What is this? Oh my. Hello. Are you a friend? Please be a friend. I don't think it's a friend. <laughs> Not the encounter you were hoping for today. These things don't back down. Oh my goodness. Jane, assess damage. Poor Pop Pop's severed head got nicked by the fireplace poker. He's going to need a lot of work this time. Over the years, your dad has spent thousands of dollars on repairs. Oh well, how much more grounded can you get to than you how much more grounded can you get than you already are? That's what I'm wondering, Samus. Why does the Earth have Lucy on it now? I mean, previously we had Beck, but that was it. Although Beck was more of like a first guardian type than like a Lucis type, but. Although maybe the Lucy have a connection with the Green Sun somehow and the First Guardians, because they're all white? I don't know. That sounds slightly racist, I guess. But maybe not. I don't know. Alright. Anyway, Jane, put head back. You stick the poker down his neck hole and jam the head back on the spike as a temporary measure. That looks somewhat more respectable, you guess. Looks like the Troublemaker's father is calling. Oh, Strider's. That's right. Oh, it's actual Strider. That totally looks like Dave's bro. And actually, oh my gosh, the hat on his shirt is like Dave's bro's hat, so... Why have you activated dear sweet Huggy Bear? Are you in danger? Oh, no. I'm just trying to leave my house. Is this the real you, by the way? Yeah, it's me. I disabled the AR for now. Okay, just making sure. Jake was having some issues with it earlier, and I don't think he received its obfuscating tendencies in the humorous spirit intended. Yes, I'm catching up with the situation now. So, oh, so you're talking to Jake then? Nah, just reading their chat logs. Man, what the fuck? I can't leave these two alone for a minute. Can a guy get his evolutions on in a fucking... Can a guy get his evolutions on in fucking peace? Uh, was it that bad? Not really. The responder what doesn't uh, the responder doesn't much distort my position on things usually. Its demeanor leaves something desired though. I prefer it didn't make such aggressive and repeated claims of fidelity to my persona. Be misrepresenting hells of my key subtleties, yo. Why not just turn it off then? Keeps them both on their toes. Who? Jake and the responder. Jake needs to be more skeptical. 
Rather than take a Pollyanna jackknife ass first off whatever turnip truck is blowing through town that day, he's got to apply more critical reasoning to shit. I keep telling him, I keep telling him, dude, you got to be more like Jane. These lectures, I presume, are roughly similar in complexion to those I'm familiar with? Those wherein I have, and I quote, got to be more like Jake? Yes, exactly, you're finally fucking getting it. I sincerely doubt that I am, said the stubborn skeptic skeptically. Let's not talk about my issues again, shall we? <laughs> Shout. That ain't even, that ain't, <laughs> that ain't a thing to say, even for you. Shush. The word shan't escape my vocabulary any longer just as you shan't nitpick, nitpick my language. That's my turf you're on, Buster. All right, kinda don't care. What were you saying? About what, Jake? About leaving the responder on. Yeah, anyway, I kind of owe it to him to let the program run as often as possible. Jake? No, the responder. It is a fully cognitive, self-aware entity that I am responsible for, not even to mention an approximate cerebral duplicate of myself. You don't just make a clone of yourself to live in a dead-end existence where it has no chance to thrive as an individual, or surpass its limitations. That'd be sick. True. Also, the more the software runs, the broader and more detailed its experiential canopy becomes. Thanks for a better dialogic partner. Dialogic? Dialogic? Are you saying you have conversations with your own autoresponder? Of course. Why do you think I made the thing? Huh, that's interesting. I guess I always thought it was a really elaborate gag. It's that, too. God, that makes me really want to think that Robot, like, continued to become more and more sophisticated, and that the Dave's bro that we saw in Acts 1 through 5 was actually, like, a sophisticated robot. <laughs> I really want that to be the case, but probably not. So let's see, got the little mustache thing happening here, got the hat thing, and uh, little bunny bro bot is happening here. All right. Sometimes your sense of humor seems more impenetrably advanced than your robotics. I'll never understand this tapestry of irony you weave. Maybe I'm just stuck in the dark ages of pranksterism with my funny mustaches corny old joke book. Yes, you are, but that's fine. We come from different traditions. Someone needs to keep that racist southern asshole's legacy alive. There's dignity in taking up the work of our familiar predecessor, familiar predecessors, even if what they did was insanely fucking stupid. Is that a note of bitterness directed at your superstar brother I'm detecting? No way, he's awesome. I've told you, I don't begrudge any of his success. I've also told you that he isn't my real bro, even though I call him that. We're related through an esoteric process of genetic realgamation. Reamal reamalgamation, <laughs> reamalgamation. Okay, that was that was that was weird. So so it sounds like Strider is talking about Dave right now. Oh lordy, yes yes I know. I don't need another ironic lesson in science fiction. All right, my lessons are rad as fuck, but suit yourself. The point is, obviously his satirical methods have flaws, and whatever tempered brand of hero worship I might be practicing isn't keeping me from seeing that. Flaws? Talk about understatement. Those movies are unwatchable. Unless your name is Jake English. Yes, spectacularly so. But they will have profound historical significance, mark my words. And, flaws aside, it's a legacy I'm proud to inherit. My duty isn't to appropriate his methods with absolute loyalty, but to apply reason and improve upon them. To leave my own mark. To perfect the art of irony. It's just like what you're doing with the work of your ancestor. You are striving to perfect his hokey vaudeville bullshit, or something. You seek the zen of a pie to the face. The Tao of falling the fuck down. Um, if you say so. I don't know. Call me a simpleton, but I just like funny jokes. Can't fool me. You take your shit as serious as I do. And if I wasn't serious about it, I wouldn't have made you that rabbit. Then where the hell would you be? Good question. Well, aside from thousands of dollars in corpse repair richer, I can't say. Has he been sleeping in the old man hollow again? Shit, that's adorable. I can think of cuter places for him to sleep, frankly. Yeah, bullshit. He's just being instinctive. In the wild, he would gut a carcass and sleep inside for warmth, as well as to, as well as to secure tactical advantage for ambushing would-be scavengers. 
Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Hey, Harp, how's it going? Happy Saturday. Good evening to you where you are. I believe it's still still morning here. Yes. 11.36 in the morning. My time. Uh, let's see. You haven't renamed him yet? Oh, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Oops. I skipped. Oh, please. Anyway, property damage and desecration to cherished elders, as elders aside. <laughs> Mr. Bear has been a lovely addition to the family. You haven't renamed him yet? Oh, no? I keep forgetting I'm supposed to. You've got to fucking rename him, or change him to a girl if you want. That was important. When pets change owners, they get new names. Fact. Sorry. Uh, I will name him right now. How about Lil Sebastian? Fuck if that isn't the best name a thing could get. Oh my gosh. Parks and Rec. Any Parks and Rec fans here? Because that's totally Parks and Rec. Yeah. So then, are you saying Mr. Sebastian here was an ironic present? Relayed strictly for guffaws? Yes, but it's not that simple. There are many layers involved. Some of them are literal layers of metal and plush. Huh? There's a real stuffed rabbit between it, beneath its exoskeleton. What? Really? Yeah, it belonged to my bro. Oh, really? Interesting. I thought you said it. I thought you said you didn't have such an air. Blah, blah, blah. I thought you said you didn't have such an heirloom to complete the plushy trifecta. I didn't. He didn't give it to me, and never intended to bequeath it. I stole it. <laughs> Oh, risky. Nah, I got a little help from RL and ganked it out of this museum. RL? Oh, is that the... That could be Rose Lalonde, but I bet it's the other Lalonde, possibly. It's this whole priceless collection of stupid shit from movies, <laughs> defended like Fort Knox. Ironically, of course. So, it's from a movie? Ever hear of Con Air? Nope. Wait, wasn't that some bit of action schlock from the 90s? Yes. Some of the silly nonsense referenced in his work was well before my time. I don't have the wherewithal to investigate all of this minutia. Yeah, it doesn't matter really, but it was from that. Dude weirdly obsessed over that shit movie for years, among others. Know those signature shades you see him wearing on magazine covers and stuff? Another prop. A gift from Stiller himself, I believe. That does sound a tad obsessive. Wasn't he furious about your burglary? Pretty sure he didn't even notice. In years since, I never saw a news story about a daring heist or anything. I feel like he would have made some hay out of that. And if he did know, he'd probably just want to give me a stoic fist bump or something. Why didn't you mention this when you gave the gift? More irony? Essentially, it's not that easy to explain. Broadcasting the gesture would have made it seem tawdry and would somewhat defray its humor value. I see. So, it was like a private joke, and if anyone besides you was in on it, the joke would be ruined. Like I said, there are layers. On one level, I gave you a filthy, tattered piece of shit, albeit of tremendous cultural significance, manhandled by some old B-movie actors, now candy-coated to function as a highly practical defender droid for your personal protection. On another level, I needed to incorporate something passable as a rear heirloom, for sentimental reasons. <laughs> Aww. Wait, real sentiment or ironic sentiment? Or is there no difference? Am I missing the point here? No, it was genuine. The upper echelons of irony should always include measures of sincerity, and if the satirical practice is executed faithfully, it will achieve something bona fide in its own right regardless. Through an intense commitment bordering on religious devotion to the absolutely inane, absurd, or plain fucking stupid, a very different kind of sincerity begins to materialize. One of reverence to the ridiculous. You begin to mean it. But what exactly is it you mean? What exactly it is you mean is never quite what appears on the surface, and is utterly inaccessible to obtuse and literal minds. That you mean it then becomes inseparable from the joke, and additional rich strata of humor may be stripped aggressively from this irreconcilable truth. This is fascinating, if a wee bit more dissertation than I bargained for this morning. I have so much to learn, and I'm not even saying this ironically. Will you teach me your will you teach me your ways one day, sir? Perhaps an apprenticeship will open? Oh god, I'd love that. Consider the position yours for the taking any time. Feel free to approach and kneel before Cal. Oh my god, Cal. <laughs> with my with my sword and his floppy mitten, you will receive my flash step anointment shoulder to shoulder and to shoulder again. Hey Zai, how's it going? Happy Saturday. Let's 
Let's see. Okay. Actually, guys, before I continue on, I actually need to go use the bathroom real quick. So I will be right back. I am sorry to sorry to interrupt, but I need to go do that real quick. BRB. Alright guys, I'm back. <laughs> uh, Tara had her opportunity to take over the stream. Alright, so guys, I'm looking at looking at where we are page-wise, and I'm looking at the clock. Um, I'm seeing that we're like, I think 45 pages or so from the end of uh, Act 6, Act 1. Um, so, if you guys wouldn't mind going a little longer today. I could just read to the end of uh, Act 6, Act 1, if that's okay with you folks. I think it wouldn't take too much longer. Is it quite a lot, though? Like, I guess it depends on, like, the content of the, uh, of the pages, but I think, uh, I think we can get there. Alright. Cool. We're gonna keep going then. Tempting, but that rain check will have to stay unendorsed for now. Little Seb is beginning to act out, and I must put fidget fidgetiness to put must put his fidgetiness to constructive use. Cool. Jane, one more thing. I'm sure you must be aware by now that you'll be a leader of our group, as you will be the first to enter the session. Um, no? This is news to me. I never gathered that team leader was a thing for this game. Trust me, it's a thing. Are you sure? I have my doubts. I believe as a group we will have the temerity to succeed without my having to order people around like an insufferable bossy pants. That's why you're our leader, Jane. Hmm? Optimism through stalwart skepticism is an effect not everyone is plucky enough to be graced with. That's stupid. Yeah, yeah, I know. You're not our leader. You're our friend, right? Precisely. There is, is a big difference. And statements like that are also why you're our leader. But only in name added spirit. Less so, functionally. If it puts your mind at ease, I'll be the one pulling the strings here. Oh, yes? Then this whole affair will be one of Dee Strider's grand productions in puppetry? I will be the unseen hand whose nimble digits are behind every subtle twitch in our session's bulbous foam ass. At least those gyrations not happening by the volition of its own quivering absorbent probis proboscis. If you ever need help, Jane, if you're ever in any trouble at all, let me know. Just say the word. 
I'll whip the toggle. St- I'll whip the toggle stick of this ludicrous marionette, cavorting its humongous bottom to intercept your free fall through the abyss. Snow cone you up in the fluffy crook of its cleft. Don't be alarmed if you're in no hurry to unpry yourself. For the great jut of this impudent rump has more yield to your touch than you ever dreamt. Remember to catch your breath as it cherishes the imprint of your hand, like a memento from a lover gone to war. There is a lot of gift to that ass, you may say. Might <laughs> Sorry, I got confused here. There's a lot of gift to that ass, you may say. Might like to settle in, make myself comfortable, start a family. Bounce a coin off that ass, you'll demand of visitors. It's not going anywhere. Bet that coin will take a good nap there. It's a gamble you win every goddamn time. Yeah. These lessons we talked about, they've already begun, haven't they? Jane, you'll believe what I've told you. Soon you'll believe what I've told you. You'll believe it all. It's just a shame that believing will take something so coarse as seeing for a girl as sharp as you. Critical thought can lead one to accept the unlikely, just as much as dismiss the impossible. I can help with this too. Would you like me to program a Jane Crocker responder for you? I only require a simple captcha of your brain. Holy moly! Um, thank you, but no. I'm not ready to get dialogic with my cyber self just yet. My friends keep me busy enough as it is. Speaking of which, I really need to go. I know you love to talk my ear off, and it's always a treat, but let's catch up later after the game starts, okay? And if I do need your help, I promise I'll take you up on your offer. I made several. Which one? <laughs> the one where you, hopefully not literally, offered to catch me in the crevice of a big squishy butt. Of a great big squishy butt. <laughs> GTG! Gutsy Gumshoe ceased bothering Timaeus testified. Yeah, that's what it seems like. It seems like you know, Strider and Lalonde are fully aware of what's going on with like trolls and stuff. Um, but Jake seems to know some stuff too because he's talked about Jade and John specifically. So anyway, Jane, command Sebastian to lift the fridge. You order dear sweet little Sebastian to put his fidgetiness to constructive use. He is so eager to assist and lifts the appliance with ease. He finds a note taped underneath the fridge. It seems to be addressed to you. Oh, wow. I wonder if, I wonder if this is like similar to like, this is exactly what I, this is exactly what I thought. Daughter, if you are reading this, it means you are strong enough to lift the fridge. You have truly become a mature, wonderful woman. I have never been more proud. Now, be a good girl, put the fridge down, and stay inside. There, yeah, that's what I thought. There's like a similar note like this for John, <laughs> like previously. Fat chance, Dad. This bird's gotta fly. Uh-oh, little Seb's acting out again. His legs are getting fidgety and bothersome. Better tell him to put the fridge down gently before he causes more damage. Jane, tell Seb to put the fridge down. Oh dear. Well, that definitely caused more damage. Oh goodness. Well, the front door is no longer blocked, but now there's also an alternate exit. So now we can go out either way, I suppose. Oh no, that got Dad's attention. Jane, throw down your hat in disgust. Oh my goodness. One day I did it to this frog, and now that frog's me wife. Is she gonna do it? Is she gonna throw her hat down? Puff! Oh my goodness. So actually we're zipping through these pages pretty quick. You've been climbing your echeladder very gradually for various minor accomplishments here and there since you were 13. That was such a sweet textbook hat pop, it earned you just enough to clear the next rung. Fedora Fledgling! Nice going! Hat, level up! The well-traveled hat shares in your glorious spoils. The battle-hardened accessory reaches dizzying new heights, leapfrogging from the douchebag's domesucker rung to the rare, highly coveted martyr's piss cradle rung. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like that should have come with like an ep epilepsy warning that screen like oh goodness anyway 
Jake, run. How can these things be so fast on land? It moves like some sort of giant freaky seal that is very hungry and angry. You know from experience that bullets only make them hungrier and angrier, so it's nothing to do but run. My goodness. Oh no, it's a hostile swarm of little fairy bulls. Ha, I was right about that. They're probably pissed off about the one you killed earlier. They have come for revenge. Oh my god, the humanity! How they exact their pound of flesh! Oh god, no! Oh god, oh god, oh god! That was fun. Oh dear. So he's being swarmed by the Tinkerbulls and like murder dragon whatever what's its face is about to like pounce upon him all right looks like there's sound on this next one let's go what Wait, is that... What is that in his pupil? That looks totally like... Oh! Oh, that's Brobot. Brobot is, like, coming in to, like, save the day and or also join the fray. I see what's happening. I see what's happening. Alright. Ironic. Go bleeding. I can't say I remember the ironic go bleeding. Oh, oh, yes, I do remember that now. Yes, thank you. That was when we first saw Dave. That's right. Nearby, someone or something bleats like a goat for strategic purposes. And also, ironic purposes. Holy cow, he just cut off its head. Like, deftly and easily. Holy crap. All right, Cole Reigns, have a great Saturday. Thanks for coming by. Jane, run. So we may actually get to the end of Act 6, Act 1, like, on time, rather than, like, extended time. We'll see. Last scapper! The jig is so totally up. Nothing left to do but scurry your little legs to that box, snatch the mail, and scram. Dad is like, what's going on here? Although I think Dad knows perfectly well what's going on here. Huh? Huh? What is going on here? Ha! <laughs> Jane, get mail. All right. So, mute Lumi again. Homestuck. Oh dear. Holy crap. Did she just get blown up? This is like way too early for people to like die and stuff. Although death doesn't really work in Homestuck like it does in real life. But holy cow. Oh, jeez. And that's the end of Act 6, Act 1. Holy crap. Oh, wow. Huh. 
Okay then. Well. It's like... I was not expecting that. I was not expecting like one of those kids to be like killed off so soon. Yeah, I think we've got. Looks like we got a few more pages until the actual inter, the actual intermission begins. So let's uh, let's go through a little bit here. Oh my God, what is this? Like hussy bot? What is what is going on here? Like what is this symbol? What the one down? No, not kids. I mean these curtain dealies. I still need to set up what? Like another five of these rigs? God damn it! Like, oh, is he saying there's like five more acts to act six? So I hope I don't run out of green curtain cloth. Shit is expensive. So, uh, what about all those other kids? Oh, and is that Ms. Paint? With, 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 uh, with Hussybot? Huh? Who? Oh, yeah, those people. Aren't they all dead? No, not quite. Oh my god, what's going on here? Oh god, you're right! There are still a few characters I haven't killed yet! I almost forgot them! Oh jeez, let's like look at the background here. So like... There's like... Um... Well, one of these is John, one of these is Jake. Uh, that one's Dave. That's Lalonde. Um, there's Rose, there's Miss Paint, there's Gamzee, there's Kanaya, there's Jade, there's Cal, there's Carcat, there's Aradia, there's Terezi, Peregrine Mendicant. Shouldn't Jack be on here somewhere? Oh, question mark about spades, it looks like. Wow, so many characters have been killed. <laughs> anyway. I almost forgot about them. I was... <laughs> anyway. Oh god, you're right! There's still a few characters I haven't killed yet. I almost forgot about them. I was planning on totally messing with them in the short window of time they're in the same universe as me. Hopefully it isn't too late. Ah! <laughs> Wait, why am I even laughing? This is a completely inappropriate reaction. Besides, I'm a tin can. Robots don't have feelings. Oh, wait. The stuff in the, uh... Something far left corner. Oh, there's Beck Noir. Okay, I totally didn't totally didn't see. Okay. Um And then there's this thingy right here. And also Oh, there's a sad face over someone right here. Can't tell who that is. I was wondering if that was Lord English. I just wasn't totally sure, but I was like, who else could it be about Lord English? Oh, that's the scary wolf head. Oh, right, 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 right. I remember the scary wolf head now. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Anywho. Hussybot, check time. Let's see. They should be traveling near the speed of light across a distance of one yard, giving them about three nanoseconds before they crash through the other wall. Which means I have about... Holy shit, I'm almost out of time to fuck up the story! Who could have thought nanoseconds would fly by so fast? Hussybot, hurry. What is he talking about? Oh. <coughs> oh, I see what he's talking about here. Who am I kidding? Even using my super fast robotic author avatar, I barely have time to do anything. Maybe I'll just level maybe I'll just level up these kids before they go and that's it. They've earned it after all, don't you think? So wait, are they like crashing through one wall and about to go crash through the other wall? Is that what's happening? John, level up. Revenge of Dr. Ragnarok. 
<laughs> what? So he's leveled up from Gale's mate to Revenge of Dr. Ragnarok, it looks like. You produce your most spirited lad scramble yet, and hop up to the next god tier, achieving the illustrious Revenge of Dr. Ragnarok. All of your vitals go completely bonkers. Your man grit is off the charts. You're embarrassed for us to even know what it is. It's that gaudy. Jay, level up. So Jade was at Growing Pains Await to Sayonara, Kansas. Oh, we're not in Kansas anymore, I see. You put forth your best last scamper of all time and clear another sweet god tier, the nigh unattainable Sayonara, Kansas. Your battle stats predictably, predictably go haywire. You accrue so much youngster gumption, it's basically insane. Nobody should ever mess with you. Not even me. <laughs> John and Jade reap spoils. You don't get boon dollars anymore. That shit is for babies now. Instead, you are finally ready to have your first achievement badge sewn on your kitty camper handy sash. You each receive the badge Gift of Gab, enabling you to engage in simple direct dialogue with others without requiring any gimmicks to facilitate communication. You don't need to type through a chat client or talk to a sprite or traverse through a memory in a dream bubble or wander around in an interactive game environment or any of that stuff. You seriously never thought you would live to see this achievement unlocked. It almost feels like cheating. Like conversing in god mode. Alright. And then next will be Act 6, Intermission 1. So, that is what we will do when we pick Homestuck back up. So, before we go, everyone, please give me your opinion. Would you like me to uh, continue with Act 6, Intermission 1 next week? Or would you like me to do the uh, play the Hive Swap Friend Sim next week? Because this, this would be a good stopping point in which to do it. Uh, the friend sim would only be one stream, I think. But uh, what do you what do you guys what do you guys think? What would you prefer? A couple for friend sim. We've got a good either way. No opinion. Yes for both. <laughs> I know there's like a couple, isn't there like a couple of uh, chapters to the friend sim now? Yeah, like if we if we finish the friend sim before the end of stream, we can just pick back up with Act 6 Intermission 1, so. Right, two parts. Okay. Alright. I think I'm seeing more in favor of the friend sim, so... So let's do that next Saturday. Uh, we'll do the Hive Swap Friend Sim. Um, just play through it next next Saturday. And then uh, weekend after that, we will jump back in with Act 6 Intermission 1. So, Yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny shape to Lost Rogue. I do have to basically like turn it like almost all the way upside down. To get the rest of it out. All right, cool. So that's what we'll do next time. Um, don't forget, friends, um, I also stream Mondays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, Monday will be my final Chrono Cross stream. I'm going to fight the final boss in Chrono Cross on Monday. So uh, come by for that if you'd like to see the end of Chrono Cross. And then the following week, I'm going to be starting Transistor on Mondays. Uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central Time, I'm playing Suikoden 2. Uh, I'm near the end of that. So I think we just got, like... Probably, I don't know, two or three weeks left. I really don't know for sure. But um, Suikoden 2 is winding down. And after I finish Suikoden 2, I'm going to be playing Night in the Woods um, coming up in a few weeks. So just FYI. Uh, if you want to hang out with us outside of stream, we have a Discord. I've got Twitter. I've got YouTube. And again, Tara, the birthday girl, has her own Instagram as well. So if you'd like to see some more Tara adorableness on this, her birthday... Um, feel free to uh, give her a follow on Instagram as well. So thank you everyone for hanging out with me on this lovely Saturday morning. I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take care of yourselves. Uh, I will hope to see some of you on Monday. Other than that, I will see you all next time. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.